uh, today uh, we are going to study policy analysis that uh, how a policy can be analyzed we will start from this question that how a certain policy or a, a combination of policies uh, be analyzed to uh, to attain the goal of uh, public betterment or the for the good of people so before uh, starting this slide i hope to uh, welcome you all in this online session which we have started uh, in our political science department uh, which is very which is very much uh, effective and uh, i would really like to uh, implore your feedback on this slide so that i may improve myself <clears throat> so moving further uh, our uh, first of all this is the introduction this is the introduction of whole slideshow uh, introduction of uh, complete session which i am conducting here uh, this is the outline you can say of this topic number 1 we will uh, discuss in this uh, session that what is public policy uh, i mean it is what is the basics what are the basics of public policy how we can identify or distinguish among other policies and uh, the public policy what is policy analysis the th second question which we will uh, answer in this session is what is policy analysis how can we analyze a policy what are the major uh determinants and ingredients of policy analysis number 3 uh, approaches of policy analysis that what type of approaches are important to analyze a policy process of policy analysis uh, how a process how uh, one step of a policy leads to another step and then to another and uh, a process is started for the policy analysis <clears throat> sorry steps in policy analysis which we discussed in our previous lecture which we uh, we which we discussed in our previous classes that how steps what are those steps and how are those steps can be taken in a direction of an analysis of a policy types of policy analysis the last topic which we will uh, discuss is the type of analysis so moving further okay what is public policy we will uh, start this uh, we will discuss we will start to discuss this we will start to understand this by revising few definitions to clear your mind and to uh, clear your concept of public policy uh, to recall to your mind the public policy focuses on the public and its problems which means that a policy is nothing a public policy is nothing if it is not an uh, addressing the problems faced by the public so this is the reason why we conduct why we focus on certain matters because we are to fulfill the agenda we are to fulfill the uh, agenda setting of uh, public second definition is the study of how why and to what effect governments pursue uh particular courses of action and inaction which means that uh, the government uh, should ask itself that government should prepare itself to uh, affect to maximize its effect on the people on the public betterment so number third is what government do 
why they do it and what difference does it make we discussed this definition thoroughly in our uh, previous classes i uh, discussed this with you i discussed with each of you this very particular definition given by dai 1976 that government do what government do why they do it and what difference does it make if we dissect this uh, definition if we uh, break down if we present the breakdown of this definition we understand that th this is the first question the government the first question for the government that what government should do what government should do to pursue the goal of public betterment this is the first and prime goal this should be the first and prime goal of a government to think that what uh, what is the capacity of that government <coughs> sorry excuse my throat um, i have a infection so uh, what governments do what is uh, the capacity how much a government can do something in uh, for example i i'll illustrate an example for you to understand to make your mind more clear than uh, make more your uh, mind your clear make your mind more clear sorry for that is what governments do what is the capacity for example a government is undertaking some uh, measures to curb the crime to curb the uh increase of street crime in a particular society or in a particular city so government first of all government devise a strategy in which uh, it will answer the ability the capacity to curb that street crimes it will include the uh, police force it will include the paramilitary forces to conduct such operations by which we can say that uh, government is doing something what governments do so i highlight this section that which we which we are currently discussing is uh, what government do so this is this is this is important so you should ask yourself when analyzing a policy when making uh, a policy analysis that what governments do and the second question should be why they do it i mean why it it is it is very example that it is very uh, very common example that uh, if the government is doing nothing we say why a government is doing nothing so when the government is doing nothing we question that government that why the why the government is not doing something for street crimes i suppose let's say for street crimes for instance why they why the government is not doing something to stop the criminals from looting so if the government do something if the government uh, make a policy to stop the uh, to curb the crime the increasing crime in streets why the government do because government wants to attain the maximum objective of public good and the third question is what difference does it make so there are three questions what this signifies this uh number uh, the first one uh, which i am erasing right now is this is uh this what governments do is the uh process the capacity this is the capacity which we are talking about this is the capacity which we are considering in, in this slide second question is why they do it the second question relates to relates directly to the importance of the objectives what objective 
uh, what are the objectives which a government can attain from that number three what difference does it make it means that if a government is doing something it means that it's if a government is devising a strategy or a plan to curb street crimes in a society or in a uh, in a country what difference does it make so how you are going to feel the differential between a policy among different policy previous state and the current state so let me ask one question here and we will move further that if a government is doing nothing in a society let's suppose a country let's suppose a country a uh, in that country there are a number of street crimes there are number of issues happening in that a uh, particular area of a country and government is doing nothing so you ask the question why government is doing nothing that is the previous state when you ask when the people of that community ask why a state why the actors of a state is not doing something this is the previous state but when a government starts to do something the when the government uh, increase the capacity increase the involvement of security in a society and the curve of uh, the crime the curve of uh, increasing crime diminishes and go uh, deep down so this is the current state so what is the differential in the previous state the crime rate is higher than the optimum level and in the uh, second stage when the government intervened the difference is the lessening uh, the lessening of crime rate in a society number 3 uh, number uh, i think 4 yes number 4 uh, definition is the study of nature causes and effects of public policies that this is the uh, study of nature nature of what nature that causes something and study of nature of effects there uh, we discussed uh, i discussed in our previous class that uh, in in our pre in my previous classes that what are the causes and what are the effects of those causes and how those these two types affect public policies so these are the uh, revision this is this is the uh, definition of public policy in our time frame when we discussed uh, in the previous classes moving forward the next slide is what is analysis this is very important question you should ask from your side what is uh, analysis urdu mein hum isko tajziya kehte hain jaiza kehte hain a systematic examination and evaluation of data or information by breaking it into components part to uncover their interrelationships you see i am uh, highlighting some important words so you may understand this definition a systematic examination the first word is uh, i told you the technique in my class how to dissect a statement this is the technique which i am presenting you right now systematic examination let me elaborate systematic what is systematic examination systematic examination is uh, the examination of a process of a state of a policy in a step wise manner and evaluation of data or information that we evaluate we evaluate data or the information for what purpose why we why we do this because 
we are answering this question because we are stressing on analysis we are doing analysis that is the reason that is the core reason that we should uh, we should ask that if we want to uh, if we want to draw analysis of something we need to do this these steps we need to uh, ask ourselves that we should examine we should evaluate data in for or information by breaking into its components we yeah, are breaking into its component parts for example <clears throat> if i ask you to uh, give me the analysis of uh, a toy or uh, you can say a machine what uh, will you do you will uh, go you will open that uh, machine you will uh, screw up that machine and you uh, give me the uh, list of uh devices list of the uh things the list of the data by which some uh, machine or some thing or some statement is made up of similarly when we discuss policy when we understand when we talk policy what we do is we take an uh, statement we take uh, a statement and what we do we uh, elaborate it we we dissect it piece by piece one by one and after reading that after analyzing that we do we uh, increase our uh, analysis we give our analysis so the component parts are important and their interrelationships so analysis is what analysis is systematic examination and evaluation of data or information by breaking it into its components to uncover their interrelationship this is the goal this is the goal uh follow my red line this is the goal this one yes to uncover to uncover their interrelationships this is the goal of analysis when you uncover the interrelationships you will and you will understand the phenomena why something happened why a statement is issued on a certain ob- subject okay next is what is policy analysis <clears throat> we discussed analysis separately to uh, to draw the uh, understanding to know uh, what is the meaning behind that concept so policy analysis is determining which of various policies will be most effective to achieve a given set of goals in the light of the relations between policies and the goals so this is policy analysis we take different policies we take various policies we ask the policy makers the government ask the policy makers to devise a list of policy on certain matter for example we are uh, we are uh, from the beginning we took uh, the example of street crime <clears throat> let me uh, exemplify here as well that if the street crimes are increasing in its number and government asked uh, the policy makers to make some policies draw a list of policies to uh, uh to curb the uh, increase in the street crimes a list uh, will be prepared and now given to the competent authorities the second step will be 
that authority will choose the effective policies the effective uh, and important policies to uh, achieve the goals so when the goals and the policies are in collaboration when the goals are corresponding with the policies and the policies are uh, corresponding with the goals which we want to achieve we can say uh, the this uh, equilibrium is the policy analysis when the equilibrium equilibrium is disturbed when the equilibrium is uh, is in 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 the movement is not stable it means that policy is not going into the into the uh, desired direction so what we do we uh, measure we correspond with the goals the policy makers is uh, the policy makers correspond with the goal so uh, here i am uh, relating this this uh, this thought this notion to the question what is good policy if i ask from you uh, ms frankly uh, what is good policy uh, good policy means how you define that this how you categorize a certain policy is a good policy or a bad policy okay think uh, on this and uh, write down your answers uh, and by the end of the lecture you ask yourself that is it the good policy or a bad policy the good policy is in which the goals and the uh, policy is in equilibrium which means let me uh, give you an example increase in checkpoints the police checkpoints in certain areas where the street crimes uh, is in play so this is the policy given by the uh, policy makers to increase the security checks on on that area okay so this uh, this policy this goal directly correspond with the object objectives with the goals which we want to achieve which a government wants to achieve so this is uh, uh, this is what i am uh, trying to uh, say that when these two things are in equilibrium uh, government is doing something which is deliberately connecting with the goal this is good policy and what is the bad policy what is uh, when we say uh, what is bad policy bad policy means that if a certain goal if a certain policy is not uh, in array with the goal with the objectives for example uh, let's say street crimes are uh, in a certain area are increasing and the government uh, does not increase the security check instead it uh, makes something uh, other than security check like uh, it ask the people of the community to look out for themselves so this is not uh, in array with the goals so that policy is not the policy of uh, important policy next slide is carl v patton's definition of policy analysis <clears throat> and the previous was the concept the previous was uh, derived from different authors different policy makers but uh call different uh call uh gave this definition of uh, the policy analysis according to call v patterson uh, the process through which we identify and evaluate alternative policies or program that are intended to lessen or resolve social uh, economic or physical problems this definition uh, more or less uh, is uh, equal to which i explained to you in my previous uh, slide that 
the policy alternatives the policy programs uh, the programs or a plan to resolve or lessen the social economic and physical problem for example there is a social issue street crime the people are suffering from street crime they are they are not feeling safe in their household on their motorbikes in uh, in an alley in, a, in in their colony so the government do something government increase the security checks and uh, that we discussed what is economic economic is when government uh, take the measures to break the monopoly of some uh, enterprise <clears throat> it is the responsibility of uh, a government to check uh, the resources check the uh, to uh, keep an eye on economic exploitation by the uh, major and uh, uh, by the class of those people by the class of those traders which are exploiting the small uh, businesses small uh, enterprises in a community in a country so government do something government take an action government in uh, you can say introduce subsidies <clears throat> to give the uh, unwealthy or the small enterprises benefits in the business sector physical means that when government is doing something physically when government is implying something uh, applying something physically to ensure that problems can be that problems are solved the police is the paramilitary forces the uh, hospitals the <clears throat> nurses the doctors the ambulances they are the uh, these are the physical uh, manifestation of a, a, a policy or a plan or a uh, program so policy analysis is a rational systematic approach to make policy choices in public sector the important uh, the important concept here is this i am highlighting that area public sector you should understand you should remember this whenever you are asked that what is important in policy analysis when you are drawing uh, the policy analysis when you are analyzing a policy what is the most important uh, feature of that policy analysis public in a public policy which is public sector why public sector is so important why this is uh, important for us important for the government important for the people for the community why because we are the part of this society we are the part of this community so the policies the rational systematic approach to the policy choices government took some actions government apply some policies to address the crime rate so when we are going to analyze that policy we do a systematic approach rational systematic approach which can be uh, which can be studied uh, which can be the practical approach which can be the practi- which have the practical uh, footings on the ground on that basis we will uh, understand we will analyze the policy of the government the second important uh, feature uh, in this is it supports the uh, policy makers to identify the p- policies which are cost effective let me uh, underline this cost effective and would help to achieve the goals so this is these are the uh, important keywords in this statement and the objective desired 
so I have underlined <coughs> sorry underlined this for you so that you may understand this more uh, accurately cost effective what is cost effective uh, let me rephrase let me give you the meaning of this particular word cost effective in which the cost is minimum and the uh, pro the outcome is maximized so this is cost effective would help to achieve the goals second most important thing is poli in policy analysis when you are going to analyze policy number one you see that this policy is cost effective second that policy is the is have the potential to achieve goals and fulfill the uh, objectives desired so these three things you will uh, locate in a statement in a policy statement in a uh, given or implemented policy number one that policy should be for the public sector number two that policy should be cost effective number three that policy should achieve the goals and number four is uh, it corresponds with the objective desired so this is policy analysis how we analyze the policy there is a 5e approach 5e approach is effectiveness efficiency ethical consideration evaluation of alternatives establishment of recommendations for positive change so we will discuss this uh, one by one effectiveness that how policy that how effective the policy or policies are are they uh, giving benefits to the people are they uh, corresponding directly to the benefits of the people if yes then it is a good policy it is the effective policy if no then we categorize that policy that the effectiveness of this policy is or has been compromised a compromised or a bent policy can never be the good policy so the effectiveness is the key for the analysis of a policy for the analysis we should see that we should uh, first we should understand we should uh, dissect that policy and see that this policy is effective or not we uh, put an eye on the effectiveness of the policy whether that policy addressed our questions addressed our concerns or not second efficiency that how efficient uh, the policy is for that I uh, you can find the definition in the notes so what is efficiency this is uh, this I have uh, written down in the notes efficiency signifies a peak level of performance that uses the least amount of inputs to achieve the highest amount of output it minimizes the waste of resources such as physical material energy time and accomplishing the desired output this is efficiency in which we minimize the waste of resources in which we uh, limit the wastage of our resources and what we do we maximize the output that policy is a good policy which is the efficient policy if the policy is wasting too much resources if a policy is wasting 
too much money, material, uh, labor, anything else. If there is excess of wastage uh, connected with policy, that policy can never be the efficient policy or the efficiency of that policy will be compromised and that make that that makes that policy bad policy yes <clears throat> sorry number three uh, third e is ethical consideration for that uh, you you or you can also see uh, in the notes area meaning of ethical it is uh, relating to moral principle or the branch of knowledge dealing with these. For example, I ask you to write a paper, I ask you to write uh, a paper on any subject, on any policy matter. You, you write that down, but you forget the ethical um, consideration, you forget the ethical standards. You cheat, for instance, you copy from your friend, you plagiarize from the internet. You take opinion from any person without telling that person that you will be using uh, his or her quotation in your paper. You interview some, uh, you, you interview a subject, you interview a pe person without telling him why you are conducting that interview is unethical. So a policy which is not uh, corresponding with the ethical issues, which doesn't uh, fulfill the ethical consideration is or can be the bad policy. Number fourth E is evaluation of alternatives. What are the alternatives if plan A fails? What will we do we have plan B we will <coughs> sorry we have uh, plan B in our uh, inventory we have different plans we have alternatives we have contingencies to address one particular problem to address one particular problem for the solution we attain different approaches, we devise different uh, policies on different levels. Levels of problems are different and policies regarding to those levels are different. So we devise, we categorize plan A, plan B, plan C. We have alternatives with ourselves in our hand. We clarify them in our mind when we are devising a policy. Plan A will address this issue. If plan A fails or if plan A is wasting too much resources, we will switch to plan B. If plan B is also uh, unable to fulfill the objectives uh, we desire, we switch to plan C. So we evaluate our alternatives. We have some different objects in our hand regarding policy matters. Number fifth E is establishment of recommendation for positive change. For that, uh, I again highlight the important word positive change. Here, uh, when we discuss positive change, we also discuss negative change. The positive change is metamorphosis. The positive change is increase. The blooming of some concept, the blooming of the governmental uh, decisions in favor of people, a positive curve, 
a positive line uh, going upwards. But what is negative change? There is a negative change. There is a negative concept of um, um, metamorphosis, which is going downwards. So both is important. The both change. The comparison of the change is important when we analyze policy while uh, using the approach 5E approach. The last one is very important. <clears throat> Sorry. Establishment of recommendation for positive change and negative change as well. I forgot to write there in this text. So negative change is important because without negative change, without uh, watching negative change, how we are going to measure the positive change. So it is important to compare positive change and negative change. So which uh, this can uh, this uh, this process is completed by feedback inside and outside in uh, some other lecture I will uh, tell you that what is inside feedback and what is outside and what is uh, important during uh, crafting bending or uh, making something uh, good for the government. So we will discuss that unethical issue in other class. Second, another uh, slide is principles of policy analysis. To focus on a central decision of pr the problem, think about the types of policy actions and can be taken to address the given situation or calamity learn to deal with uncertainty, make the analysis simple and transparent, check facts, not rumors, give the public analysis, not decision, be aware that there is no absolute correct, pure, rational and complete and comprehensive analysis. So these are the principle of policy analysis by which we analyze the policy. Number one is focus on central decision of the problem. Central decision of the problem. I can imagine your blank eyes. I can see because I have taught you in uh, face-to-face -face session and I see when I ask question what will be your eyes like you are blank central decisions of the problem okay central decision means that government took the decision that government uh, takes a decision to address the problem there are different levels of analysis there are different levels of policy but the important thing is the central decision, not the process. Institution A is saying something. Institution B is referring to something. Institution C is categorizing this problem in another way. But the government analyze, but the government consider every possibility the government look upon every situation, every possible situation and gave the decision. So that is the central decision given by the government. So we should look upon when we are analyzing a policy, when we are analyzing a public policy, we should uh, based on a principle of central decision. Number second is Think about the types of policy action and can be taken to address the given situation or calamity. If something happens, you have your policy types. Apply to those types, which we discussed in our class, in our previous classes before midterm exams. 
we learn different types apply those types and analyze regarding to the situation of the calamity or the calamity uh, for that for third point uh, I again refer you I stack this um, it means that you, you can see this in the notes what is uncertainty learn to deal with uncertainty this is the very important principle this is very <coughs> sorry important principle when you are uh, analyzing a public policy what is uncertainty let me ask this question let me start with this point that what is uncertainty being in the state or a state of fear of unknown please uh, this is not to this is you can write that down state of fear this is a typing error uh, state of fear of unknown and failed to absorb the shock or trauma it means that you don't know something in this world we we are unaware or unaware of the future okay let's uh, let's be clear so <clears throat> what we do we we don't know anything we don't uh, we can plan we can uh, use our mind we can see the previous patterns we can learn from the history we can see the patterns and we can locate uh, the possibilities not certainties possibilities and possibilities are uncertain remember that that those are only the possibilities not certainty so in this world we don't deal with certainty we don't deal with something concrete so in policy analysis in public policy analysis or in policy making in general what we do we prepare ourselves to to understand the uncertainty in this world to prepare ourselves for the uncertainty so that we may absorb the shock so that we may absorb the trauma and we act after that calamity or the shock we act we act rationally after that but if not how we are going to act rationally when we uh, when we cannot think straight when we cannot cope with the situation when we are uh, taken by surprise so it is important for us to learn to deal with an uncertainty we cannot change uncertainty we cannot change this behavior not at all the world is moving forward it cannot move backward this is not something you can reverse entropy is in play entropy is in a circle going on and on going forward and you don't know the line you don't know what is coming to you what you can do is what policy makers can do what we can do is to learn to live with uncertainty it is difficult to live with uncertainty but we need to learn this because why let me ask uh, let me uh, clarify why i am saying this why why it is important to learn to live with uh, uncertainty why nahi seekhte hain we cannot learn hum jaise hain waise theek hain but why why this is so important because uh, without this without learning to deal with uncertainty we cannot be able to perform according to situation we cannot re rethink and employ our resources in a better way 
to address the situation this is important because we want to address a situation this is important because we want to act after something happened because we want to ensure our safety security and our survivability so that is depend that depends on this uh, this point another is make the analysis simple and transparent if you are analyzing some uh, issue if you are analyzing an issue make sure that your uh, issue your analysis is transparent your analysis is simple check the facts not rumors always go to uh, that you know, always go to uh, you can say a source an authentic source rather checking on rumors uh let me give you the example here <clears throat> okay the example is uh hamare paas there is a, this is a routine example that we don't check facts through authentic sources we go on social media we go on uh, we google everything we we try to do some we try to do this thing which make us very much uh, very likely uh, prone to surprise prone to that issue which is uh, which we are dealing with so it is important that we should check with facts with authentic facts not rumors another is give the public analysis not decision it is it is our duty it is the duty of the government it is the duty of the decision makers to educate the people to tell them to analyze the issue not the decision government this is the job of government to decide something not the analyst we here are the analysts we are analyzing a policy we are trying to analyze certain government steps that suppose we are dealing with increase in street crimes yes this is this is this is the issue government has start to do something for this so we analyze the government we analyze the decision but we cannot decide what government is doing or not what government can do or not last one is be aware that there is no absolute correct pure rational and complete and comprehensive analysis because absolute is nothing philosophically speaking absolute is not an entity absolute is in the imagination absolute is not in this world is not the reality reality is not absolute so you find it very interesting when i uh, when i say uh, in my philosophy classes that what reality is is it a thought or reality is what in which we live this is very uh, confusing but for that for your class for your understanding you you should understand that nothing is absolute nothing is perfect nothing is uh, you cannot say that you can devise something you can create a or a make a very uh, comprehensive and a very uh, perfect policy nothing is perfect near to perfect near to perfect is achievable nothing is perfect because perfect is unachievable so in policy analysis when you are Uh, analyzing a policy when you are drawing an analysis for a policy 
it means that you are doing your best you are doing everything in your power to analyze your policy but still there is a chance of an error chance of a mistake chance that you missed something chance that you uh, unintentionally missed a point an important point which uh, which make you which made your analysis less important which made your analysis incomplete so no one can uh, give absolute or perfect perfect uh, analysis so you should under, uh, remember this okay this is uh, the this is our last slide of today uh, i will continue this lecture after this slide uh, this is the last slide which i will discuss it today this is the process of policy analysis so what is process sorry 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 what happened what happened